Welcome back to Never Shut Up. It's your boy, Marcel Swally. Was it Wednesday? Damn, ain't no Tuesday or Thursday therapy talk. It's Wednesday. What is this? Wednesday waiting room. All right, Wednesday waiting room with Dr. Child. Let's call it that right now. Let's bring in Dr. David Child. Yep, look at him. See, he in this, what is that, the OR, the ER? What R are you in right now, Doc? Uh, the OR, ready to start some surgery uh, in the OR. My my hat's over here. I took my mask off, but uh, ready to start some surgery here. Okay, I have to ask this. I've seen more than a few of those uh, hospital shows, and I used to love emergency. Um, your process, somebody is asleep in that room next to you, and there are a lot of CRNAs or nurses attended to them like how are you right now this looks like pre-game explain this process this is a little bit pre-game obviously your wife is a crna uh and uh, uh we actually only have anesthesiologists here don't just for private no crna it's the same place you had surgery on your foot same place mm. uh still wow. and so uh the patient i'm looking over is just barely coming back into the room you can't see the patient purposefully obviously there's an anesthesia process and a positioning process so this is where we have 15 uh 20 minutes and no i don't have a taxi meter running with anesthesia putting in quarters and the patient is not asleep right now man so what is your pre-game like game plan and schedule of notes like it just says foot surgery and then you see the MRIs and the x-rays and you're just like, ah, I know what to do. Like, how do you even go to it and then know what to do when you're in there with it? Well, I mean, kind of like you uh, getting into a game, right? Uh, when you start a game, you already have a game plan. You know what offense they run and you have a defensive game plan. But it's step by step. You you know, okay, first down, you run this defense. Second down, okay, so you get in, let's say, the shoulder. That's my first case. And, okay, is there a labral tear? Okay, there is. Then is it fixable or is it trimmable? So there's some audibles that go on. And there's a game plan when you start off. And you know what you're going to do, but what the defensive specific calls on the next play depend on the down and distance and ultimately the scoreboard and what's happening. So uh, the bottom line is I don't think you lay uh, awake at night worried about you know, on the bus <laughs> right over like you're a rookie. Oh, what if they call this play? What if they call it? What am I going to do? You already kind of know what you're going to do, and you're just waiting for the call. And 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 even though there is a call, Sometimes there's an audible mid play, right? Or something happens differently. And uh, that's what you're prepared and trained to do. Man, this is fascinating. I can keep going. And there's a parallel to what's happening in the NFL right now because, as you said, mid play, sometimes things change and you call a mental audible. And that's what the hip drop tackle is to me. Mid play, I thought I was going to tackle him like Coach said and how they taught me in Pop Warner. But this sucker is pulling me. So guess what? I know how to stop this pull. Yeah. Well, no more of that. Yeah. They have banned the hip drop. What do you think about that, Doc? Well, I'm for the banning of hip drop tackles in terms of the danger. It's as dangerous or more dangerous than the horse collar in terms of lower mm. body injuries. We have talked about how so is pulling someone by the back of their hair or dreads. It's like the hip drop, but that's not illegal. That's, you know, they haven't been that right. one yet. I mean, you know, the NFL and the rules, and they, they, they don't want the hair hanging out uh, kind of a deal and individualization. But landing on a guy's leg. But the NFL said something very unique in the rule. They said it's swivel hip drop. So they're saying it's not just dropping your hip. It's grabbing by both hands dropping your hip and then swinging swinging and landing on the back of someone's legs they say they need all three components in real time to call the penalty and they've already said we know that's going to be difficult so if you miss the penalty we're okay with that but we're going to check it in slow motion on monday and you all may be getting a fedex in the mail and we're going to get it out of the game with fines so there's their backup when it's an obvious swivel hip drop it'll get called when it's borderline they're going to let it go let it adjudicate now if you go back to hits to the head that's happened a lot right oh they missed that one but here's the letter you know and the fine and so they're trying to get it out of the game for a good reason and uh the adjudication has always been the difficult part now my question is going to be and i don't know how it's going to work is let's say you grab some by the waist you swing and swivel your hip 
and you as you're about to fall on their leg you let go with one arm and you just hang out with one arm now is that a swivel hip drop mm. technically there are not all three components mm. i don't know what they're going to do with that it's going to be interesting to see but it is good for 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 the health of players i like that i like that that's excellent analysis especially taking us in depth to the layers because when you get that FedEx on Wednesday, message received. Uh, they taking that money away from you. Uh, sometimes some of and, those penalties and, get lost in an emotional context, right? And, and the other thing is, scoring acts last year was down in the NFL, and the NFL likes scoring. So, you know, one extra penalty a game, maybe that helps scoring a little bit, you know, prolong some drives. I like that. All right, let's talk about what's going on in the medical world with the NFL. Uh, the IR, more players on IR and roster flexibility. What's going on there? Break it down. It's been going, going, going. And, and I'd say this is the big outcome of COVID. You know, when you were playing and when I was a doctor, there was no, there was one, IR was a one way street. The whole yeah. purpose sure. of having 53 players and suiting up 46 is you had seven players for injuries. Historically, some teams might stash players by putting them on IR. Can't do that anymore. And and here's the thing. Now you have players that can go on IR and come back, designate to return, basically almost an unlimited number. Didn't used to have that. You have roster flexibility with expanded practice squads from COVID, and you have practice squad call-ups at any time uh, that you could do. Now there's a big rule change this year that it used to be you had to make the 53-man roster to go on IR where you could come back. If you got put on IR before the 53-man roster, that was season. And that's the way it used to be, season. And that's what made being a, a doctor hard. There was so much pressure to get guys back because do you put a guy down and then you can't get him back or do you keep him on the roster and they're saying, come on, we need him, we need him, we need him. Whereas in other sports, there's a 10-day, 15-day, 60-day. The NFL always was not like that. Now it's way easier to do roster management. And now you don't have two players, don't have to make the 53 to go on IR to come back. And so that will make life a little bit easier too. a lot more flexibility and availability of players. Okay, let's talk about the availability of NFL games. I hope I'm not hearing what I'm hearing, but please tell me that the NFL is not thinking about having football on Wednesdays. Doc, please tell me I haven't heard correctly. Well, they haven't mentioned having football on Wednesdays, plural yet, but they absolutely have said there will be football on a certain Wednesday this year. Christmas Day is on Wednesday. We talked about the takeover mm. of the NFL mm. over the NBA for Christmas Day. It happened this year, and Wednesday is Christmas, and there will be two games on Wednesday. <laughs> Now, how the NFL is going to justify it is roster manipulation. Late season, they they start games on Saturdays after college football is over in December. So there will be four teams that play on Saturday, and they're going to flip opponents, and those four teams will play on Wednesday. So the logic is that's like a Sunday to Thursday turnaround. But the NFL is really good at creep i've been saying this for a long long <laughs> okay creep. they went from 16 games to 17 games what's next 18 games they keep adding international games and what are they going to do with the 18th game here's my prediction they're going to add two a second bye week now i get it back in the day two bye weeks didn't work many years ago because that was before fantasy football and like, I want to see my Chargers play. When are they playing? They're not playing this week. It's different. But now, Monday night, you turn on the TV. You don't even know who's playing until you turn on the TV. Thursday, you turn on the TV. Sunday night, no one asks, hey, are the Chargers playing at 10 a.m. or 1 p.m.? Are they on the road or home? You just turn on the TV. So this is where two bye weeks will actually now work. And what will that do? It will give you 20 weeks of Sunday night football, Monday night football, Thursday night Ooh. football. 20 oh. weeks of NFL slates instead of 8 or 10 games at 10 a.m. Okay, so what? There's seven games or six games at 10 a.m. some weeks. But what it also does open up 
is Wednesday night football because then you compare teams coming off of buys to play on Wednesday. I mean, the NFL is a machine. They figure out ways to make more money, and this is the creep. We played a Wednesday game, you know, uh, kind of situation, and it worked. And we played on Christmas. It worked. We're going to stay on Christmas. We played a Wednesday game. It worked. They're going to sell the TV package. And I think they'll get there when they go to 18 games, 20 weeks, two bye weeks. They'll get there. And guess what? The players may go along with it because they're getting half the revenue and there's more TV revenue to go. So the players may go along with this for that reason. And as much as, as you know, players don't like Thursday night football, they love the mini buy after Thursday night football. And would a player really complain about playing on Wednesday if their buy was the week before? They played 11 days after their one game and 10 games after their Wednesday game. You know, the buy gets chopped up a little bit, but it's still a buy. So that's where I think it can work from a safety perspective. And it obviously works from a dollars perspective. Yeah, you said a lot there, Doc. Um, Two things that I took away from that is one, I love how you said the creep, like the boiling frog, like the NFL just turned that temperature up just a little more, a little more. You don't even notice it. And next thing you know, They have taken Sunday from the Lord and Savior. They got Monday already. Tuesday better watch his ass. Wednesday coming. Thursday we got Friday. We got Friday games. I swear I've seen a Friday game. Certainly got Saturday. Uh, After uh, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, we see Friday games regularly. That's right. Only Tuesday is left for the taking, and they're going to come get Tuesday in about five years. You know the NFL about it. And the other thing that I, I love, is dispelling this myth because a lot of players do hate playing on Thursday. But I, being in the practice sessions, I'm like, y'all don't really hate this. Want to know why? You play on Sunday. If you have to play that Thursday, Monday is a cakewalk, Tuesday's a cakewalk, Wednesday's a cakewalk. You play Thursday. We rather play than practice. Then you're off for a week and a half. Like, what are we talking about? Like, that's two weeks of football with two games and like you said an extended bye week never made sense to me to push back on playing those midweek games now let's talk about this there is some pushback from Robert Kraft shout out to Columbia alum who um, has some issues with the documentary the dynasty what are his issues with this doc well uh, our boy Rodney as well as Devin Courtney came out and said you know dynasties that is focusing on too many negative things. It's not focusing on the true dynasty and the winning. And Robert Kraft backed up those comments saying, yeah, there were a lot of great players that were interviewed. That they were on the cutting room floor. They didn't get their stuff in there. And he's not necessarily happy with the portrayal. But wasn't there a lot of word that, I mean, at the end of every show, and I haven't watched it all yet, doesn't say Robert Kraft or Dynasty Productions or something, that it's his tagline. And he's complaining about what they did with the show. I mean, this is probably pushback for his spin on how, I guess he's, I don't know, blaming Bill or, you know, exonerating himself related to the Brady thing. It is, he was in control of the production. Now, maybe he ceded control at some point in time. But the bottom line is that that at some point in time, the producers of the show were answering to him. He's saying, no, I let the reins go and it went in a different direction. And it happened naturally. It wasn't me. Uh, I I don't know. The bottom line is you still were the man behind the curtain, so to speak, right? I mean, pay no heed to the man behind the curtain, as they say in The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, I got a little intel on this one. So, I mean, obviously, you don't even need intel to know. When Robert Kraft Productions produces something, that means Robert Kraft and his busy self just wrote a check. And y'all better go out there and do something to make me look good. They went out there with that intention. Final cut comes to you, Robert Kraft. You still busy? Oh, you didn't see the whole dynasty, maybe? All right. Or you did see it and thought it was okay. All of a sudden, here comes the headwinds and pushback. I didn't necessarily sign off on all of this. You know how the game goes. So I get all of that. I have not seen it. And some Patriots executives highly recommended I see it for the same reason. They said it's not glossy cotton candy. It's actually digging in and making them laugh at themselves, be self-deprecating, and also taking shots 
at themselves. So I'm going to have to judge it for myself soon because uh, there's a lot of pushback on this one, even though it may be real when keeping it real goes wrong. Last but not least, let's go our Chargers. Jim Harbaugh is being Jim Harbaugh right now. What have you seen from your old boy, Jimmy? <laughs> old boy is right. Uh, Jim Harbaugh is unique. We all know that. We say he, yeah. he's going to do things. Jim's going to do Jim things. And I love <laughs> it. He's on his way. Just in this last week, a garage sale. Then it comes out that he's been living in an <coughs> RV in L.A. and loving it. And this morning... I, or, or last yesterday, I saw that he handed Adam Schefter a business card, and the business card is huge, and it's a card that has the rules of life. Of course, it has on there, uh, you know, uh, uh, praising God, but it also has on there, you know, who's got it better than us, and attack every day with the enthusiasm unknown to mankind from his dad. But it also goes, one of the ones at the end is marry well in, marry well, and I mean, Harbaugh's, I mean, who's ever done that before? <laughs> Handed out business cards with a cell phone, a head coach, but then these rules of life. Jim's going to do Jim things, but let me tell you, I, I'll wrap this up. And right now, I, I love Jim Harbaugh, but he's kind of the anti-Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell is this guy with all the reds, and I'm going to do push-ups, and I'm going to eat 18 cups of coffee, and I'm a real man's man. <laughs> Jim Harbaugh, we talked about, he, he and I are the same age. I see the kids in the locker room look at him and going, oh, here comes another dad joke. That's what my kid said to me. So if Dan Campbell's right. got Riz, Jim Harbaugh got <laughs> love him and his anti-Riz. He's, he's dad joke Jim, you know? I mean, that's – it's I love it. But there's method to his madness. So he goes to Michigan to see the, the pro day. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. He sees his old guys or whatever. He praises the heck out of J.J. McCarthy which makes him a good guy. He probably believes it, helps his old quarterback. But guess what that does? If J.J. McCarthy elevates to one of the top four quarterbacks and the top four teams take quarterbacks, where the Chargers sit? At number five. Five. They would then get the number one non-quarterback pick. And obviously the Chargers are not picking a quarterback with Justin Herbert. So... Mm. Crazy like ah. a fox, that Jim. Love him. Yeah, I love him too, man. He just brings energy. Like you said, uh, there's all types of coaches. There's a Dan Campbell who I played with in Dallas, so I know everything he's doing is authentic. That's really who Dan Campbell is. There's a Phil Jackson of sort who will get, hit you with the, the cerebral approach and make you think through situations. And then there's like Jim Harbaugh who brings so much electricity and energy, it just invigorates you. It just juices you up to do more than you expected. So hopefully we have the results we want. I don't know who had more head coaches in my 17 years in the hell, me at the Chargers or you and and then some of the different teams, (laughs) probably you. But the one thing that I've observed that works I don't care if you're Mike Riley and a player's coach and a rah-rah and, uh, you know, hip-hip hooray in the locker room, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't care if you're Marty Schottenheimer and more hard nose or you're Norv Turner. What works is being authentic. You're together Mm -hmm. with players and people too long. If you're fake, I don't care if you're a player's coach, they ain't going to like you. If you're a hard ass and you're authentic, it will sell. As long as you are you and consistently you and players know what to expect out of you and what you do is consistent with who you are, I think you're liked and accepted and a lot of different styles can work. You just have to be authentic. And I think players see through when you're not because you speak to them too much. You have too much time with them. And exactly. If you're fake, you get found out. And that's why we've been rocking for two decades plus, Dr. Child, because you are Dr. Child, the same guy on the screen, same guy in the OR, the same guy when you're hanging, just out there in the streets, man. Respect to you, Dr. Child. We'll talk to you next week, brother. All right, thanks. Next week in London, we'll have to figure out time changes. (laughs) Oh, my God. Talk to you in two weeks. I'm in the Bahamas. Let's do it. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. All right, brother. I'll talk to you then. Yes, that's Dr. David Child. Always a different perspective on the NFL and sports in general. Coming from the OR, man. Ain't that crazy? Like, you go to sleep and somebody just cuts you open and start fixing you. 
I got salutes for them cats. <laughs> Respect to Dr. David Chow. All right, let's focus on some comments. These kids need to get dressed. Let's go. Uh, we were talking about Young Jeezy yesterday who was talking about the three roles people have in life. What was it? Hero, martyr, and victim, right? So here's a comment. I understand what he's saying, but the truth is everyone plays one of those three each day. Sometimes all three are one day. Now that's deep. The longer you live, you get it. Get got or speak on your reflection. Ooh, the real question is how long do you stay in each stage? The one you stay in the longest usually defines who people see you as. Now, I, I man, slap me in the face. Um, I don't look at myself as a victim, but you know what? I think it's when, when I'm with my sister, who's really the person I'm closest to in this world. Like I'll tell her all my deepest, darkest secrets. Um, that's when I'm like, I'm her teddy bear. So I'm like, that's when I want to cry about life. I'm a victim. Like, life heavy. Oh, I got to do all this, Logan, and all this stuff. So that was, that was pretty slick. You, you, as, as Doc said, you creeped up on me right there. That's a great comment. Uh, let's talk about Diddy. I'm with Mace on this one, even if he's laughing at Puff. Remember, when Biggie got killed, Puff left Mace in L.A. to fend for himself. I think Mace looked at that as Puff let, left me to die. I would have, too. <clears throat> I would have an F him attitude with regards to Puff after that. I don't blame Mace if that's his attitude as well. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's loose though. Left me to die. If, if me and you go on vacation, right? And I, I got my own means, you got your own means, you got more than me. And then something happens, you go. I could go too. <laughs> I mean, like, the airport don't close when you leave. Like, I, I don't know. There's some details in there we're forgetting or not, not mentioning. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure Diddy did some things that he shouldn't have. But I think the biggest problem is he promised a lot of people a lot of things in life and in business. And they don't think it turned out as fair as it should have. And they're pissed off that he ended up with all the money and their money's done run out. That's a great point. Because not only is that specific to this situation, even Mace talked about it. Uh, he was talking about it. Like, Puff didn't give him the money he deserved and the respect he deserved. But Mace didn't try to sabotage Puff. But people will, because they're not as talented as Mace. So somebody not as talented as Mace feels like Puff ain't respecting them and paying them the same. What their, their emergency, uh, break glass in case of emergency, is to sabotage them, is to make something up. I've seen it a thousand times. So that's usually the commonality was you rocking with somebody for 20, 30 years and all of a sudden, hey, guess what happened? What happened? Nothing. Your ass just flipped. <laughs> what do you mean what happened? Uh, when you're getting paid, nothing happening or something happening? I hate, ooh, I can't stand that. Ooh, I can't. Look at me, I'm mad. I'm dropping shit. All right, here we go. Um, last one is NFL entitlement. I don't think I'll be watching NFL by 2026. Why keep feeding this beast when the game is worse than it's ever been? Uh, we going through that again. Stop lying. <laughs> we went through that in COVID. We went through that with Kaepernick. We went through that with BLM. Like, y'all ain't leaving the NFL. She know, she know how fine she is. She just call you, you gonna answer. You gonna pick up what you want. No, nah, I'm all right. I'm good. <laughs> NFL don't care about you. They got you already. They don't care. You, man, we hooked on the NFL, as we should. Ain't nothing wrong with loving football, damn it. Stop getting mad. You go, I'm a boycott. Everybody always want to boycott. Ain't nobody outside with you. <laughs> I love, look, I am not a protester. I am not. As a matter of fact, at Columbia, I used to see them cats when they protest. I was like, dog, don't you got class? Yeah, but we need to fight for. I was like, no, we don't. We need to learn so we can get up out of here and get some money and opportunities. Yo ass over here doing a hunger strike for 40 days. I'm like, dog, I'm just sitting there eating me a pastrami. I, I got practice, dog. I can't go on no hunger strike. What's wrong? Oh, no. You don't know what's going on in the, in the middle, damn part, southwest, part of Asia, east, Indonesia? I was like, no, you don't either. <laughs> you reading the script. Man, you better eat. <laughs> I am not a protester. Do not. Nope. Back in the 60s, you know what I would have done? I would have been an orator. I was like, all right, y'all go protest. I'm going to grab a mic and talk. <laughs> we all got to do it together, right? It's an orchestra. But I am not the one with a sign in front of the hotel. Nope. If they ain't paying me, I'm going somewhere else to work. <laughs> I'm an asshole. I am not a protester. Oh, man. I am not a... Nope. Ain't got it in me. All right. Y'all know how we finish every show. We finish with a Wiley-ism. 
Yeah, be nice to know it. You're made to empty your bucket list. I saw this the other day. I was like, oh, that's interesting. You're made to empty your bucket list. All those dreams ain't supposed to just be dreams, fool. Realize them. You better recognize. You better start living them. You got to do it, right? You're made to empty your bucket list. Um, and we all got a bucket list. We all got things we really want to do, should do. When you don't know how long you got in the game, you better ball out every play. I told my itty bitties this last Friday. A little kid got hurt. And I said, look, I'm always looking for the life lessons. I know I overthink stuff. I know I talk too much to these itty bitties. I'm like, look, that's why. Part of the reason you, you're looking at him and they're all sad. They're like, oh, he got hurt. I said, that's why whenever you're out there, you go your hardest, you do your best. Because you never know how long you're going to be out there healthy. Because ain't nothing worse. You ever been here? You ain't really tripping. You playing hard, but you ain't really tripping. You just playing. And then something happens. You tweak your ankle or something. And then you recognize I'm limited, and now you want to go full throttle. And you can't. Oh, I used to hate that. Like, I'm balling, I'm balling, I'm balling. I get hurt. Oh, I want to ball more. I, can't, I want to ball harder. Can't. Got a bad wheel. So don't waste the moments when, when, when somebody say, what's up, man? Nothing. Chilling. Everything the same. Oh, I can't complain. It ain't going to help any, anyway. You can't help me if I do. All right. That's actually a positive statement. <laughs> things are going well. Things are uh, unbothered. Things are normal. Perfect. Take advantage of that because there are going to be times where things ain't good. <laughs> things ain't normal. And you're going to have to still go out there and get it and still ball. So whatever you got on your bucket list, pour it out. Get it in the game right now because you don't know how long you got on the clock. Remember this. You're made to empty your bucket list. That'll do it for today's episode of Never Shut Up. Oh, man, it's not the weekend yet. God dang. Let's get it in, y'all. Got love for y'all out there, man. Make sure y'all keep this thing rolling. Have an amazing day. I know I will.